Hello guys, this is the Don't Deflector, and today I'll be talking about Swift Encoder. It's a shell script that I wrote, and it uses FFmpeg to encode all the videos within a given directory. I wrote this script using my minimal knowledge of shell, so things might not be as quite as well implemented as they could be. If you would like to give me any tips or uh, just give me suggestions, that would be appreciated. If you would like to make any modifications to the script, perhaps contribute to it in any way by um, coding, then that would also be pretty awesome. So in this video, I'll be talking about how to use the script as well as some of the settings that you can change, my rationale for the defaults, uh, what video quality you can expect with the defaults, as well as how the script all kind of works. So let's get started. After you've uh, acquired the script from the GitHub link down in the description, what you want to do is first move it to your home directory, just so that you can execute it from everywhere, then use shmod plus x, and then the path to the uh, shell script to go ahead and give it execute permissions. Now the next thing you'll want to do is open up the script and look at some of these settings here. Uh, you might want to change some of these, as I've tailored the defaults to my use case, which is a user who wants good quality video at small file sizes. So I'm using x265 as the default. You might want to back it uh, down to x264. x264 is compatible with more devices and is also streamable, whereas x265 uh, is not. In addition, x264 takes uh, less processing power to decode and encode in. So x265 takes like three times as long as x264. There's also rate factor, which um, determines the quality. I chose 21 as it uh, is a good compromise between file size and quality for me. There's also the preset, which de determines basically it's how long the um, computer gets to think about what it's going to encode. I chose medium because going to slow, it's like twice as slow and really doesn't give you that much better file size. Basically, preset will allow you to achieve lower file sizes as the computer gets a bit more time to think about what it's going to compress. There's also pixel format. You can choose between 8 and 10-bit. Basically, a 10-bit encode will allow for less color banding, especially in dark areas. Now, you might want to use 8-bit because not many, not all, the, not a lot of devices support 10-bit. Um, uses 8-bit just for compatibility's sake, though I think 10-bit is superior in pretty much every way. It just allows you to put more color into um, the video. The audio codec right here, lib opus. Opus, basically it obsoletes every other lossy audio uh, codec. Opus is great for, well, anything really. Still, not all devices can play it, so you might want to use something like AAC or libmp3 lame. Though, Opus is just amazing. It sounds great, even at low bit rates. Hell, even at 64 kilobits per second, I think it sounds good. There is a little bit of artifacting, but I barely noticed it. Um, at 129 kilobits per second, yeah, no difference. I couldn't even hear a difference at 128 kilobits per second. That, that's enough geeking out about Opus. There's, of course, a switch for constant or variable bit rate. Again, aforementioned audio bit rates. Uh, if you're using AAC, um, shoot for the highest, go for go for 256, mp3, go for uh, uh, 320. Now audio channels, I choose stereo, that's kind of self-explanatory, and then there's the input format, basically the format of the videos that you want to encode, and then output format, what do you want to spit back out? I choose MKV as it um, uh, supports a lot of codecs as well as a lot of subtitle formats. I do encode a lot of anime, so that's really useful. Now I have the completed files folder, which we'll be able to change. The default is completed, though you can change it to pretty much anything you want. Now with the completed files folder, it'll create the folder in the same directory that um, you have your encodes in, so just be careful with that. I have no idea how to implement it any other way, so if someone um, has that knowledge and would like to pass it on to me, or perhaps uh, just fork my repo and uh, do it themselves, and then put it back to the master branch, that'll be greatly appreciated. Anyways, enough about the settings, let's talk about how to execute the script. Type sh, and then uh, Swift Encoder, and that should auto-complete, so that'll call upon the script. And the next thing you want to do is type in the optimization. I have two available optimizations, anime and normal. Anime will add some uh, animation-specific encoding options, uh, things like more B-frames, etc, etc. 
uh, optimized for animation, which usually includes a lot of repetitive frames. And then there's normal, which adds none of these encoding options. I'll be adding a few more optimizations as time goes on. So go ahead and choose your optimization. I'm choosing anime. And then go ahead and point it towards the directory where all your uh, video files are stored. And there we go. It'll go ahead and encode the video. I have the Fate Zero opening right here, and it's encoding it with these settings. Alright, so after it's done, it will go ahead and, and create a folder called completed and move anything with SE appended to it into that folder. SE is just a little bit of a SE is a, a marker so that you know what you have encoded with Swift Encoder. Now let's talk about the core functionality. I have an if else statement here and for loops that are in them. So basically first it looks to see if the first argument that you specified in the command line was anime and the video codec is x264. Then it'll go ahead it'll go ahead and run this for loop and it will add this optimization for animation. Well, if not both of these conditions are met, it goes ahead and jumps down to this next one. If the arguments in the command line is anime and the video codec is x265, it'll run this for loop and have these uh, this optimization set. Else, it'll just run this, which is normal and has no added optimizations. And after it's done all of that, it'll exit the loop. Uh, it'll exit both loops, and then it'll go to the palace of immigration, where uh, a folder is made, uh, the completed folder, and then all files that have SE appended to them be, are going to be moved into that folder. Now let's talk about the file size and video quality that you can expect while using the default settings. I'll be using two anime as examples, Fate Zero and Bakemonogatari. Fate Zero has 13 episodes, all 24 minutes long, excluding the first episode, which is twice as long as all the others. It weighs in at 4 gigs. There's also Bakemonogatari at 15 episodes, which weighs in at 3.7 gigs. So you could probably expect a file size of maybe 6 gigs, 7 gigs for 25 episodes of an anime, I'm guessing, depending on how much action is in each uh, one. Maki Monogatari has a bit less action, though there's a lot of trippy scenes. You can see that the file size is around eh, 250 megabytes, or maybe 200. Not too bad. Sometimes it goes as low as 160. Now we have Fate Zero, again, the first episode twice as long as the others, and it's around 300 megabytes. And uh, as for video quality, well, I can't really um, put anything onto YouTube without being taken down, so I guess I could offer up a download of some sort in the description, probably of this Fate Zero opening, which is 43 megabytes. It's an X265, so you'll need a compatible player such as MPV, perhaps VLC to view this one. I'll make sure it's in the description. Anyways guys, that was Swift Encoder. I hope you enjoyed the video and find this project useful. And if you make any contributions in advance, I'd like to thank you. Anyways, that's all I have for today, and I'll see you guys later.